Good afternoon, everyone. And welcome to the first of many Infrasys webinars. So today, we are going to learn about microstation. So what we're going to learn today is the very basics of microstation. We're going to learn about the fundamentals of cells and know more about the basic of Bentley's CAD software, which is microstation. In the Philippines, government uh, agencies like DPWH is now using open roads. So for those of you that don't know about open roads, it is, uh, it is a civil design software which uses microstation as its base. So it's very much like Civil 3D, okay? So I uh, I will, in, in explaining what my softwares are, what the Bentley softwares are, I will be using the famous softwares here in the Philippines, okay? And by the way, I forgot to introduce myself. I am Gian Ignacio. I am the lead engineer for Infrasys, and I am a professional civil engineer. Okay, so uh, let's get this webinar started. So a little introduction about myself. I am a professional civil engineer. I am a qualified trainer for open building. So this is Bentley's AEC software. So it's like Revit. Okay. I am also a qualified trainer for MicroStation. So MicroStation is like CAD. Okay. So uh Let's start with a little bit of a story. So just this morning, I was trying to get, I was trying to ask my colleague to get a photocopy of something. And he told me, sir, I will Xerox it. And then when he told me that, uh, that prompted a little bit of an inside joke we have here in the Philippines. So for example, what do we call this product? Okay. Most of the Filipinos, they will call this Colgate, right? When in reality, this is called toothpaste. Okay. Another example, what do we call this? We Filipinos, we will call it Pampers. When in reality, it is called diaper. This is a, we call this Frigidaire, when in reality Frigidaire, Frigidaire is a brand. And we should therefore call it refrigerator. Okay. And this one, we call it Xerox, when in reality it's, we, call, we should call it photocopy. So this is what's, all, this is what's happening in our, uh, in our engineering world today. So we call this AutoCAD, okay? When in reality, it should be called CAD, okay? So there are many, uh, this is where I would like to draw the line. When we call uh, everything that, that is related to engineering software as a CAD, as AutoCAD, when in reality, AutoCAD is a brand from Autodesk, okay? So what does CAD stand for? So CAD stands for Computer Aided Design. So there are many CAD softwares in the Philippines that we do not know of. So I will start by naming some of the Bentley products that we use in some of our projects. So we have MicroStation. So this is our webinar for today, webinar topic for today. Staad, some of you might have heard of Staad, our um, structural analysis software. Open roads, open bridges, open buildings, plaxis, and iTwin capture. So you will learn more of these products as we go on. So we will be conducting I believe we will be conducting two webinars monthly and we will talk to you about 
these softwares. So let us start with, uh, we had a project with the Department of Public Works and Highways and we integrated the softwares together. So we, we can combine the softwares. We combine the MicroStation, Open Roads, Open Bridges, and iTwin Capture to create their project. So I have a video here. And by the way, these products are from Bentley. Okay, Bentley Softwares. So here is our um, video. So we did a project called the Mixiality Solution Project, where we fly a drone to gather some pictures. So the first step is we fly the drone. So this is our colleague. We flew the drone to in our office and we tried to gather the photos. Okay, so as you can see, we did not use a very expensive drone. This is just a Mavic Pro 2, where when once we gather the pictures, we can create a 3D object of the uh, terrain that we just did. Okay, so how how can how is this going to be useful for us? As you can see here, we can see the points in our model where, uh, sorry, someone is asking to record. Okay, so as you can see here, once we have gathered the photos, we can process it in iTwin Capture. So this is iTwin Capture, where it processes our photos to make it in, to convert it into points. So when we are going to place our road, we do not need, when we are going to um, place our uh, buildings, our roads, our bridges, we do not need to uh, use, we do not need to use a total station in creating the points. So uh, this example right here, this example right here, this is called the Open Roads Concept Station where we can create conceptual design for our roads. As you can see, it is very easy to use it. This is very useful for conceptual design. Okay, we can also uh, adjust can create bridges in our open roads concept station. And this is, this software is called Synchro 4D. So Synchro 4D, this is like Primavera combined with 3D models to create what we call the 4D model, where once our construction schedule starts, our roads our bridges will be shown uh will also be shown in 3d the completion of the project okay so this one is lumen rt lumen rt is our visualization software where we can uh, where we can visualize our projects okay so our our project is called the Mixiality Solution because we used a head-mounted device where we can combine our 3D models into mixed reality. Okay, so what does that mean? Let me show you a video. So Mixiality, uh, the HoloLens, HoloLens, this device is called the HoloLens. HoloLens is created by Microsoft where we can input our 3D models like so. And while we are also seeing our uh, the real world within us. So this is very useful for big project meetings where we can use this for inspections, okay? For uh, bridge inspections and such. So this is what we did. This is what we did with the Department of Public Works. We have four projects and this is one of them. 
the Dasma GA May Carmona Bypass Road in Dasma Reynos, Cavite. So as you can see here, as you can see here, this is different from here. Okay? Because the lighter the lighter color, uh, this is um this is a 3D model and the uh, and this one this is a 2D map. So what we did is we flew the drone here to capture the terrain and we put it on top of a 2D map to properly present it. So uh, let's see. Okay. So uh, we flew the drone. And once we have flown the drone, we used the terrain to create our road. So we can be it can be readily available to calculate cut and fill once we have created our road design. And by the way, this is a detailed engineering design. So this is the actual. So this is the actual design given to us by the Department of Public Works Central Office. Okay. We also have another project here, which is the NLEX SLEX connector. Same thing goes here, as you can see. The lighter one, this one is 3D. And the the other parts are 2D. So when we when we flew the drone, this project is already ongoing. So what we did is using our our software, we cut the bridge from the terrain so we can place our bridge design, which we can which we can see right here. Okay, so the terrain of this is actual. Okay, this is what's uh, this is what's really going on in the NLEX SLEX connector. So this bridge design, this is also a digital engineering design given to us by the Department of Public Works. Okay, so. Before we can do all of this, we must first learn the basics. So we will be first, we will first be starting with MicroStation and I will be teaching you the very basics of MicroStation, okay? So the first, this is the interface of MicroStation when you create a new file. When you first open your MicroStation, you will see this interface. You will be asked to select a workspace and a work set. So basically, workspace and work set is your standards. Okay. And, and I can show it to you right here. Once we have created a new file, it will ask us to select a seed. So seed is your template. So this will be your settings for your said DGN. So of course, when you select a 2D seed, you will be creating a 2D project. When you select a 3D seed, you will be creating a 3D project. So let's start with, I will be sharing my MicroStation. Okay, can you now see my screen? This is what a uh, MicroStation looks like. Okay, so uh, by the way, MicroStation is mainly used. We had trainings for our clients in New Zealand, Australia, Singapore, the US. They are the primary users of MicroStation. Okay. The Philippines, all we know is CAD. Okay. Some 
uh, the, the most famous is CAD. Okay, so I want you to remember that, that when you see a CAD software, you call it CAD and not AutoCAD. Okay, so because not all is from AutoCAD. Okay, so this is the basic interface of MicroStation. So as you can see, we have, let me hide my, the zoom, okay. So we have our basic commands here. We have our workflow tab, where if we select a different workflow, we can see different tools in it, see? So since we are going to be working with cells, we are just going to work on our drawing workflow. Okay. And on, on CAD, what we usually do is we do everything in one workspace. Okay. So in MicroStation, we do not do that. I will just turn on my ACS. So in MicroStation, we do not do that. We can create multiple models inside a single design file. So I, I believe our practice when using CAD is we do everything. We do everything in one file. So we do not want to do that and we want to be organized. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a new model. So when working with cells, this is how we create a model. We just go to our models tab, we create a new model. Once we are creating a new model, it will ask us what type of uh what type of model do we want to do? So there are three types of model in the Bentley ecosystem, the design file, the drawing file, and the sheet file. So what are the difference? So to make it simple, design file is where we store all of our geometry. Drawing file, this is usually 2D. This is where we create our annotations and our sheet file, this is where we print. So what the software do is once we create a design file, it can automatically create drawing files for us and put, and it can automatically put our design and drawing inside a sheet, okay? So that is uh, basically how MicroStation works. So let's try creating a 2D design file. So I have an example here. Let's try and create a manhole frame and cover detail. So this is, uh, this is just the tip of the iceberg and we will have many more webinars with different topics. So this is just the basic because you will be using MicroStation, you will be using your basic MicroStation knowledge when you are working on the other open products, just like open roads, open bridges, and open buildings. So let me finish this manhole frame cover detail. Manhole cover detail. Okay, we can change the annotation scale right here. And it will ask us if you want it to be placed as a cell. We want it to be placed as a cell because that is our goal for today. So usually when we conduct trainings, when we conduct our trainings, we, have, we follow a certain workflow. And what we are going to talk in this webinar for the whole series of Infrasys webinars are special topics, okay? So one of them is this, which is creating a cell. So when working on MicroStation, you need to, uh, every command that you do, there are three steps to it. The first step is to select a command. So for example, 
I want to place a smart line. The second step is, as you have noticed, when I selected my smart line, this window appears. So the second step is to fix the parameters. So do I want to place lines, arcs? Do I want my vertex to be sharp, rounded, or chamfered? And do I want to join the elements, rotate the action draw, and start in line mode? So as I have been saying, MicroStation, every MicroStation command is three steps. Select the command, fix the parameters, and look at your prompt. So the prompt is right here in your lower left. It is asking us to place a smart line, enter the first vertex. Okay. So as you can see, enter the next vertex or reset to complete. So reset means you are going to do a right click to end the command. So basically that is how that is how you um, execute a command in MicroStation. So I'm going to delete. And by the way, this, the selection here is just like in CAD. So if you do a right to left selection, you need the entire, if the entire object is inside the box, it will be selected. If you do a right to left, even just a portion of it is inside the box, it will all be selected. Okay. So when dealing on MicroStation, you need to first fix your level. So levels will be uh, very useful, especially when we go to the higher version of the products like open roads, open bridges, and open buildings. Because this will come into a big factor when we are doing BIM, okay? Building information modeling. So just to make it clear, when we are working on 3D, when we are working on, on AEC softwares, for example, what you know is Revit, okay? That is basically, that is not BIM, okay? Because BIM, BIM is a process, okay? And Revit and the other softwares are BIM tools. So uh, when I was a student, when I see something being created in 3D, I always tell, oh, hey, that's, is that BIM? So when I started working, that's when I have learned that it is a BIM tool and BIM is a process. So first, I will be starting with our um, manhole detail. So first I need to I need to select a level. So the levels will define what our line will look like. So if you want to create our own level, we can do it by going to level manager. Okay, so uh this is the one of the special topics is to create levels. We can just simply create a new level. So for example, 2D cell creation, I can change it like so, okay? So once, once I have created a new level, I can search for it here and I can use it for my work, okay? So let's, use our 2D cell creation. And let's first uh, create the manhole detail. So what we're going to do first is we want, we want to do the Bentley three steps, which is to select a command, fix the parameter and look at the prompt. It is now asking me to enter a first vertex. I want to start it right here. And then I can input a value, as you can see, on the lower part of our screen, the one that's shaded black. I can input a value right here. Okay. I can input a value right here, which will be used to uh, determine, determine my uh, 
the length of my line. So before I continue, I want to fix a parameter right here. My design, my working units, I have to fix my working units because when I created this project, it is in inches, okay? Okay, so now I can, oh, by the way, uh, in MicroStation, we mostly use the, your left click and your right click, okay? When we want to use the ortho command, we press enter. So what this what enter does is it locks you in your current acudro. So I am locked to my x axis. By the way, this compass that you're seeing right here, this is called the acudro. So for example, I want to create a line, 3.5 units. I want to create another line of six units. Uh, I can press enter to lock my acudro in the in this axis, pressing 1.5, 1, 1.5, 1 1, 1, 7 inches. And I can also use, uh, just like in CAD, we can use some snaps. So for example, I will lock this line to my current axis, which is Y. Okay. So you can see, I can point to the line that I already created and it will issue a snap. So you can see the yellow button that's appearing. I can then select my left click so I can create a line and enclose the object. Okay. So uh, this will be my one half of my um, manhole detail. So when we are conducting open roads training, most of the people, most of the trainees are asking, how do you input lines with angles? So as you can see, this is my acudro. I will, I will raise it right here. And I will issue a left click. As you can see, my compass is rectangular. So these are rectangular. And it gives me an, an X and Y value. When I press M, as you can see, it switches into a circle compass. And this is now my polar coordinates. I can now give a specific distance and an angle. So for example, I want this line to be locked in at 64 degrees. I can press tab to lock it in 64 degrees. And then I can do a snap right here. But as you can see, as you have me, as you may have noticed, the snap is snapping somewhere else. So what we can do is we can look at our snap modes. So currently, I am snapped to my key point. So I can do a multi-snap to snap it in this line right here. Okay. So once we have done one half of our of our uh, detail, we can do a mirror command. So what we can do is, I'm going to bring my acudro back here. So one strength of having an acudro is to change the origin of your uh, compass. We can change the zero zero of our line. So for example, I want to start, for example, I want to start my line 0 0.5 units from the, this corner. So in CAD, if you want to do it, I can do a line 
I can type in 0 0.5. So this is what I do, what I did when I was in college. I draw a 0 0.5 inch line and I will use this as my snap. Okay. And microstation, we can change the origin of our of our start point. So what I can, what I will do is I will be pressing my O to change the origin. So as you can see in my compass, this became my new zero zero. I can now type in zero point five on my X. As you can see, this is my temporary snap. So I haven't issued a command yet, which is my smart line. So once I have clicked here, this will be the start of my line. I do not, I do not have to uh, draw a, a five inch line, point five inch line, and delete it afterwards. Okay. So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to. Um, I'm going to create a midpoint where we can mirror our, a part of our detail. So I'm going to select my smart line command. I'm going to press. I'm going to press my um, to change my origin. I'm going to change my origin right here, and I will key in a value of 13.5 and I will do a left click. So this will be my midpoint. So once I have my midpoint, I can select my detail and I can mirror it. So I will select this, do a right press, select mirror. I will change my mirror direction to vertical and I will select make copy and I will look at the prompt. Where do I want to mirror the element? So I will be selecting my midpoint right here. So I can uh, mirror my element. And then afterwards, I can finish creating the details of my manhole. Uh, just like what we did earlier, I can change my origin right here. Key in a command. Key in a command change my origin and start at 0.5 inch from this corner right here. Okay, I'm going to do a left click. I'm going to press enter to make sure that I am in a straight line. I will key in 26. I will move my mouse upwards, press enter to lock it in my Y axis. Input a value of 1, 26, and then close my object right here. Afterwards, I can connect my details right here. And finally, I can create an arc. I can create an arc to... Uh, finish modeling my manhole detail. So there are a couple of methods when creating an arc. You can choose to, uh, you can choose the method of start center, start center start, start mid end, start end mid. So the easiest is to use the start and mid where we just have to where we just have to select the start and the end of the arc. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to select this as the start of my arc and this as the end of my arc. I will look at my prompt. Where do I want to place my arc? Is it this way or this way? So I'm just going to move my mouse downwards and do a left click to finish my arc right here. Okay, and then I can delete my construction line that I have used as a midpoint. Okay. So um, basically, this is just showing some of the commands that we can use in 
microstation. So let us try creating the top of our uh, manhole cover. I can, I need to move my Zoom meeting first. I can select to place a circle. So when placing a circle, there are a couple of methods to use it, center, edge, and diameter. The easiest is to create one by center. So again, when dealing with microstation, I select a command, I look at the prompt, I look at the parameters, and I look at the prompt. I will select a diameter of 20. And it is asking me to identify a center point. I will use this as a base for my center point. And I'm just going to move it. I'm just going to move it to my right, right here, to my left, right here. So to create our manhole cover, I just need to create concentric circles with a given diameter. So I'm just going to reduce my diameter right here to 13. As you can see, I need to place this in the middle. I need to exit the command. I need to place this in the middle. As you can see, I am snapping right here because I have my multi-snap enabled. What if I want to just, uh, what if I only want my snap to appear in the center? I can select my center snap once. So once I have selected my center snap, so you can see this is highlighted. So this means if I issue a left click, the snap will be gone because my permanent snap is my multi-snap, which is shown as hatched. So once I have my center snap, I can just point to the object that I want to snap it from. So as you can see, I'm pointing it right here and it's snapping me to the center. So we want this to happen. I will just do a left click. I'll change the diameter to 13.5. I will do it again. Change the diameter, 14.5. Change the diameter to 17 and we have our manhole frame and cover okay so one of the strengths in using microstation so if you remember when we created a model we need to fix the name in the description why do we need to do that because when we when we create text so for example this is a normal text editor, normal text editor. So you can see, I can select, I can place it and enter my text right here. But I can also use my model's properties to, to create some text field. So for example, I will be using my model properties to create a text. For example, I will be using the name manhole frame cover detail. I can have it so it can automatically adjust my text to the uppercase. And once I have placed it here, this will be my text field. As you can see, it is highlighted gray to symbolize that it is a text field. So what, so what this can do is, for example, I will rename my model. I will rename it. I will just name it manhole. And as you can see, my text field updates with it. Okay. So this is one of the useful things in uh, using your text editor. So basically, our topic is to just create a cell. So it is very easy. I just tried to... Uh, teach a couple of tips along with it. So when creating your cells, we can just go to annotate. In our cell ribbon, there is a little button right here on the lower right. That is your cell library. So when you're creating 
cells, you first need to create their cell library. So I will create a new cell library. I will name it 2D cell. So as you can see, this is now my cell library. I can now create some cells with it. So what I first need to do is I first need to define the origin of my cell. So I want it to be placed in the middle of this uh, manhole cover. Afterwards, I can input a fence around it. So as you can see, did you see what happened? I'm going to unselect it first. I placed my, my cell origin right here, but my create cell is grayed out. What I need to do is I need to place a fence around it. And as you can see, it is now highlighted. I can now create a cell. Manhole frame. No, no, no. Manhole cover. Create a cell. So once I have this created, I can now just do a double click around it to place my cells. Okay. So this, this cell exercise is an introduction for customizing your other software. Okay. Because um, for example, we can also create one in 3D. So when creating with 3D, so when creating with 3D, this is an example of my buyers. You can see we have it in wireframe. We can choose to see it in illustration. So this is just a basic buyer that I just created. If you want to create a cell, a cell of this, we can do it. So what, what we just did is we go to annotate, we place, the origin of our cell, place a barrier around it, I place a fence around it, and then go back to my cell library. So you can see this is my, in my 2D cell, manhole frame and cover, I can also create my 3D barrier. Okay, and then I can place my 3D barrier how I like. So this is basically how you create a cell. So I've taught you this because creating cells is very uh, useful in your other products. So can you see my PowerPoint? No, I will reshare my screen. Uh, hold on. I will reshare my screen. Okay. So basically what we did is introduction for your open roads, open bridge, and your open building software. So basically once we have learned, once we have learned how to create our own cells, we can choose to create a feature definition in open roads, by the way, you are seeing open road software. It looks like MicroStation, but this is open roads. You can see, we can choose to select the feature definition of our alignment so it can appear just like how we create our cell. There are different, uh, there are many different feature definitions to choose from, as you can see. Once you can learn how to model and create a cell, the possibilities are endless. Okay, so we also have a different type right here, a guardrail. Okay, so what we just what we just do in open roads is to set up an alignment and change our feature definition. So you will learn how to create feature definitions from the cells that you created once you have attended more of our training. So this is just the very intro. This is just the tip of the iceberg. Also, you can also uh, input your cells in our open building. So open buildings is our AEC software, like in this photo. So basically, if you can create a cell, we can input it in our 
uh, library and we can place it in our other softwares as well. Okay. For example, this is a lounge chair, a toilet. Okay. So I believe that's all for my quick presentation about the basics of cell creation. So basically, uh, we can we can do cells in just five minutes. I just took a lot of your time. Okay. So uh, the floor is open for questions. It can be about MicroStation and our other softwares as well. So feel free to ask. I will leave the chat box open if you have any questions. And uh, by the way, and uh, by the way, uh, we are having another webinar. I believe it is scheduled two weeks from now. It is about STAAD. So be sure to check our Facebook page to learn more, to know more about. Okay, so we have a question from Sir Charles. How much is the software? So to answer your question, I will send an email right here. You can send an inquiry to this. She is our uh, sales manager. Okay. So, uh, okay. So you can inquire from here. So, hello. MicroStation commands is the same with AutoCAD, not necessarily all, but the concept is quite the same. So for example, I can uh, different, let me uh, think of something. So for example, for example, let me share my screen. Uh, let me share my screen. So for example, uh, one is asking about the basic command. So not necessarily all is the same because for example, when doing offsets, for example, if you want to offset something, in MicroStation it is called copy parallel tool. So what we can do is, as you can see, copy parallel tool. And also explode, is different in MicroStation, we call it drop. So some of the, some of what you may know is different from what MicroStation is. Okay, so uh, let me see the other. <laughs> so we have a question here. Uh, good presentation, very nice. The HoloLens is very nice. Gano po katagal aralin from zero si MicroStation? This is a very good question. So the one who asked this question is the one who was flying the drone in the video I shown earlier. This is Engineer Nilo. This is my former colleague. So when, when learning from MicroStation, when learning MicroStation from zero, the learning curve is very high at first because especially when you are used to CAD, okay? Most of my trainees are CAD experts and they always they always press escape, enter, and space bar. Those three are very confusing because uh, in AutoCAD, you use enter to execute the command. In MicroStation, we need to do a left click okay so next question is from nico lawas hello sir what's the minimum pc requirements for your products 
So uh, basically, when uh, when we are working, so uh, we can use eight gig of RAM minimum. And when we're when we're working on three D softwares like Open Roads, Lumen RT, we need to have a graphics card. Okay, even even a nine seventy graphics card is fine, but for but of course it will affect our performance when working on three D. So basically, to to use all the softwares that I have mentioned. My machine is i9 RTX 2070 and 16 gig of RAM because uh, I use all of the uh, heavy softwares of Bentley. Okay. So are there any more questions? Uh, by the way, if you have liked our page, we will be sending uh, multiple new webinars right there. Good afternoon, engineer. Learning these softwares po ba is a must and a good foundation as an aspiring highway engineer, specifically yung open rules designer. I would say, sir, yes. Okay. Back, back when I was in college, I was tasked to do a highway design using CAD. Okay, so that is very hard. But when you learn how to use open roads, you can do you can do this in just hours. So uh, basically, sir, we will be having another uh, session of webinar for focusing on open road designer. And to give you a little bit of information, the Department of Public Works is slowly transitioning to open roads designer, sir. So they have purchased licenses of open roads designer, and we have created the Philippine work set where we will we will have our um, standards, our Philippine standards embedded right there. Okay. So that's a good question, Sir Kevin Vispo. And by the way, assisting me in this training is Engineer Sheena Domingo. She is our open roads expert. Okay. So she's here and she is seeing your she's seeing your message and she's looking forward to you attending her training. And that is all. Thank you guys for attending my quick webinar session. Thank you. Don't forget to check our page. We will be having a STAAD webinar next to be held by Engineer Urshi Clemente, our uh, structural engineer. Thank you, everyone. <music>